welcome to scenic West Virginia, home of the beautiful Greenbrier Resort, lush mountains and fields, country roads, and giant irradiated bats. These enormous creatures are known as scorch beasts. They're one of the largest and deadliest creatures you'll encounter in Fallout 76. Bethesda invited me out to a Fallout 76 event where I recorded around three hours of gameplay. Towards the end of my session, I was level seven or level eight, which is pretty low level. In any case, my character is currently level three and the Scorch Beast is level 50 plus. I've got a pipe pistol. You do the math. It doesn't look good. But I got lucky because I was playing in a server with 23 other people and a few of them were developers. So I put together a posse and at the end of my play session, I went back and we all hunted the Scorch Beast. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cool. But before I show off that hunt and before I give you no commentary gameplay, there's some things I want to tell you about the Scorch Beast and Fallout 76. One of the questions I had for the developers was, how long is the game if you just play the main missions? And they said, playing the main missions and kind of ignoring the rest of the game, it, it's going to take you about 40 hours to complete all of those. Which sounds pretty good, because it seemed to me that there's also a lot of content outside of those main missions. But that also means that you're not going to reach the end game instantaneously, which should go without saying. But if you're someone that wants to play by yourself and you don't want to play with a group, it seems like that's totally viable. Now, there are things that are just naturally favored toward team play, such as fighting a Scorch Beast, because if you're fighting it solo, you're going to need to have a pretty high level and some pretty good weapons. Whereas if you're fighting with a group, you can just spread that weakness out and everyone doesn't have to be level 50. Not nearly. Another example is players being able to work together to solve puzzles that grant them nuclear launch codes. You can get those nuclear launch codes solo, but it's going to take more time and more effort. If you want to be a lone wanderer that's almost as effective as a group, that's going to be tough. Now, if you and your friends do get your hands on nuclear launch codes, you can aim the nuke at the fissure from which the Scorch Beast crawls out of. Once the nuke strikes the fissure, it'll seal it, temporarily stopping the Scorch Beast from spawning. Now, I'm not sure if the nuclear blast kills the Scorch Beast itself, because a nuclear blast creates a fallout area, and that fallout area transforms the local flora and fauna, basically leveling it up, resulting in rarer materials and item drops, but also more powerful irradiated versions of whatever flora and fauna were in the area. So maybe it makes a super Scorch Beast, but seals the fissure, I'm not sure. The Scorch Beast by itself is enough of a handful. It's got a lot of varied attacks. It has these giant gamma rays that it shoots out at you and you gotta dodge them. And it also can crop dust you. Basically, you and your group will wanna stay as mobile as possible. And if you're a lower level, grenades are probably the most effective way to kill it. In any case, if you guys want to see nuclear gameplay in Fallout 76, I've got a link in the comment section below. But I'll leave you with some commentary for gameplay of the Hunt of the Scorch Beast, featuring a developer who saved all of our asses in a beautiful bathrobe.